Ladies and gentlemen, whether you like it or not. Greetings, gentle viewers. Now, some of you will have come across the director of this film in this video that went viral. Yup, this was directed by the Charlie Chaplin Time Traveller guy, a guy who thinks the following things weren't around in the 1920s. A. Smallish radios. B. Ear horns. C. People putting their hands in front of their face to block out the sun. Or D. Mad people. Now this is Northern Ireland's first zombie film, and because the only country to have its first zombie film not be entirely shit is the United States, this is entirely shit. This is Battle of the Bone! And a quick warning, you won't understand a lot of the dialogue. Not just because the sound is so awful that not even I can understand it all, but because it was made in Belfast using mostly local actors. If you've never heard the sound of someone from Belfast talking, well, here's the Omega, who's actually been to Belfast, to explain what it's like. Someone from Belfast talking. Okay, well, take English. Find the least reputable translation website you can, translate it into Portuguese. Then hit up the Language Museum website, translate into Early Babylonian, arrange it to read from right to left, and then take that text to St. Ariana's home for tragic mouth disorders, find the oldest patient there, have him read it, and record the sound he makes. That's somebody from Belfast talking. This free runner is investigating a clearly important science lab that is in no way being played by a science room in a school. Perhaps I'm crazy, but I would have thought that high-tech labs would have had actual equipment in them. So the scientists leave, and the guy jumps down from his obvious day for night shot and runs off with a jar full of pink sweets. And then running. Something that unfortunately you're going to see a lot in this film. Well, a lot might be too weak a term. Something that you're going to see a fuckload in this film. Ah, clever. I see your camera that's too low and too not a CCTV camera to be playing a CCTV camera. is actually playing a CCTV camera. Smooth. So, running, more running, and oh yes, running. So the guy I don't know or care about escapes, because like bumper cars or very early Daleks, the guards can't operate outside. Curses! Curses? So then, a serious voiceover, pictures of terrorism, and oh so sad traditional Irish music, because this film is actually serious and has a point. After all, when dealing with a zombie movie, nothing says quality like an anonymous voiceover, sad Irish music, and photos of real-life violence. If everyone who took part in this unnecessary destruction was sat down to an honest history lesson of our country's past, then know that I would be an example to the world. Battle of the Bone, a film so nice they named it thrice. Well, nice isn't the word I'm looking for. What am I looking for? Um, oh yeah, bad. So now there's a meeting in a shadowy underpass. I smell a drug deal. One of the guys ruins it though by pulling a gun and the other guy compounds the ruin by running off, meaning the first guy looks about 12 and his friend who looks about 40 have to chase after him. I bet you thought I was kidding when I said there was a fuckload of running in this. Well, you should know better. I never joke about running in the Battle of the Bone. Meanwhile, in an unconvincing mental hospital, these two women talk about something while smoking something. I'm sure the dialogue explains what they're smoking, and why, given that it's illegal to smoke inside your workplace in Northern Ireland. It's a pity that the film's audio is either terrible or terribly dubbed, and in this scene it's the former. Meaning I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Wow, less than seven minutes in and they don't even have continuity between their not CCTV cameras playing CCTV cameras. That's the stock door opening sound you're going with? Okay, I would have gone with this. These people are clearly supposed to be doctors of some sort, although one of them could be someone cosplaying as that doctor who's always in the Nostalgia Chicks videos. Apparently, some sort of a patient has run away and they need to go and find him. Because who needs orderlies when you've got fat wood in white coats? And back with the running, and then there's more running, and falling, and the makers apparently have a very weird definition for the word deep. There's only one reaction to that. So he keeps running, the 12 year old catches up to him in a car because people who run through forest land are often easy to find using cars. And then this happens. Really? You're going with the Lee random frames black approach to editing? 
And because a mere car ploughing into him can't stop someone from Belfast, he's up and running again. And not only that, but he's managed to drag a massive log onto the road so the car can't follow him into the hospital where the women are. The sort of place that would have people on the lookout for people who would leave giant logs by their gates. Anyway, in case you were wondering, the film now tells us what everyone needs before they enter a mental hospital. Yes, lots of guns. So these two are still sitting and talking, even though a patient's running around. DO SOMETHING! I changed my mind. DO NOTHING! So the chasey and the two chasers get into the grounds, and I have to say, for a mental hospital that's so run down that it only has three doctors and no orderlies, it's got a lot of cars. The outside is also played by Knockbracken Healthcare Park in Belfast, where I've actually been. That's weird. So the chasey finds a dead body that's still bloody under a sheet in a dark room with a James Woods-sized chest vagina. While they were filming that, I really wonder if someone pointed out that Northern Ireland actually has morgues. With freezers and everything! So we all know what's coming next. Hurry up and stick your hand in. Shall we say, well, fisted? The guy hid the pink drugs that resemble sweets from the lab inside the body, because although the film has little interest in you knowing that him and the thief are the same guy, they still are. The film then shows that Northern Irish hospitals store body parts in baths full of blood. Oh, come on, it's not Wales. Hey. Fuck you. Fuck you, Taffy. Oh yeah? And what's that over there? A sheep you wanna fuck? That stereotypes the Welsh, you idiot. So, what do people have as a stereotype from Hakenstone, then? They cower in fear. In front of me. Hmm. We're kind of at a crossroads here. I can't insult you for having slaves because you like that. And you can't insult me because I'll just use it as fuel for my next video release. Yes. So, what? Should we just insult the English? Okay. Phil Brain, you oh, suck! <laughs> Actually, they're keeping him under a blanket in a room instead of the morgue suddenly makes sense. I mean, who'd want to be resurrected in a morgue? Ew. No one wants to turn into Paul McGann. God, no! So yeah, the guy who had drugs stuck into his chest, drugs which were inside a plastic bag, has become a zombie. Because that's what causes zombies in this. There's a reason Romero didn't tell us. The chasey is killed, and even though this woman is close enough to hear his screams, she sort of doesn't. I wonder, why does this place have no fucking artificial lighting, and then this guy randomly changes into a new shirt just in time to be killed? <laughs> Meanwhile, this woman's still looking for the patient, who is seemingly a ninja. And then this happens. Holy shit, why were looking for an escaped mental patient? I didn't expect to find one! So the escaped mental patient is actually a zombie, because he escaped before the chest vagina guy was raised via the drugs, and we never saw him get bit. I think it's safe to say that there are two separate zombie outbreaks that are happening at the same time in the same place. Either that, or they fucked up continuity or something. But that would never happen. Because the scriptwriter had a little bit too much to drink, the 12-year-old chaser comes across a broken rotary phone. Which works. <laughs> Please, movie, just fucking kill them all! Oh, thank you, movie, but pray tell, who is the woman with the long blonde hair? Were you keeping characters from me? Could I have been watching people who didn't make me want to stab my own brain for the last 20 minutes? Music doth soothe the savage zombie. And hot pants. On a doctor. Really? And was that fucking zombie behind those curtains the whole time? How? Why? The window's boarded up and she's been playing piano for the last ten minutes. Why the fuck has he only just appeared? A movie, just a general question, but why can't anyone hear what's going on in another room? So, 24 minutes in and we finally concentrate on the film's main character. This guy in a grey hoodie. And instantly we have a flashback back to the day before when he was working as part of the staff of the same hospital. So they do have staff. So he's cleaning something, and this patient, who's taken the Chancellor Gowron approach to acting and has bugged out her eyes, is obsessed with knives and stabbing people. 
What have I told you about the kind of sharp things? A mental hospital where you're not allowed to access sharp things. Has someone told the makers of Faust? Go away. Clearly, it's a bit too much trouble to actually lock her away from the sharp things, so instead he just warns her. Which leads to this. Jesus! So, clearly important flashback over, the guy's taxi comes across this scene, which is fairly usual for Belfast actually, and the guy leaves the taxi to battle this roving gang of hoodies who are trying to steal Aidan Gillen's bike. So, mission accomplished, they run off and the police finally join in. Completely unrealistic. The Northern Irish police have three modes for dealing with crap like this. A. Power hose. B. Plastic bullets. C. Real bullets. These kids shouldn't be able to walk, let alone keep destroying cars. Northern Irish police don't even look like that! So the guy and Aidan Gillen actually know each other and are forced to go another way because even small, unconvincing and badly organised riots block off streets. So, then I take my bike and I... Come you stepped in, but thanks for that. Well, like, let's just get the fuck home. I'm sick of this shit. Me too. What are you doing working on the toilet anyway? And back at the hospital, the zombies have managed to find the room where the people actually are. Presumably, they were all either deaf or taking part in a newfangled soundproof room therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile in Belfast, for a change of pace, walking. Jesus Christ, how the fuck are we supposed to get home now? Just walk through it, CGI doesn't hurt. I suppose I should maybe give some context as to why people are going nuts and burning stuff, but it's much simpler just to say, it's Northern Ireland. Shit happens. Because one of the many, many inspirations for this film is the three Billy Goats gruff, the guys try to get over a footbridge and meet up with another gang of hoodies, who may or may not be the same guys. We need to get over the bridge. Fuck that, nobody's crossing today. It doesn't really matter though, because there's a fight and these assholes can multiply like amoebas. There's self-defense, there's second-degree murder. So they fight and are about to cross the bridge when they see something terrifyingly off-screen that they have to run back the way they came, and then they get chased off by more hoodies. So they meet up with this woman, one of the few non-Northern Irish people in the entire film. She was stupid enough to move to Belfast from England, and for that she deserves to get eaten. She's also friends with the other two, because Northern Ireland is a large village. They've also got the ability to talk while running and not sound like they're running at all. Just keep running. Oh, I sound like I am running in terror. Was Adam Rhythmic breathing too much to ask? So the gang chases them into an industrial place, and because the director seems to think that everyone in Northern Ireland is a mediocre free runner, and they're really not, allow me to demonstrate. Are you Northern Irish? Aye. Can you free run? I can try to. Please do. Ah! I rest my case. They do shit like that, and that. They then have a fight scene which involves throwing tiles at each other, climbing through metal rolls, running past pillars, climbing ladders, jumping around huge rolls of duct tape, falling down hills, losing focus on the camera as someone is hit with a spade, throwing cardboard, and finally reenacting the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Ah! <laughs> do you think they realize that they kinda, sorta, maybe, possibly left the bridge they were stopping people from passing? And, by the way, this not very good or interesting action scene was roughly eight minutes long. And yes, I watched it all. Ah, clever Aiden Gillen. Use their terror of going down ladders to escape! So the guys climb down, chase after him, and finally find him topless, squatting in a hole. I am not even going to try to work out what's going on there. 
Come on, let's do this thing! So many different ways I can interpret that. My favourite involves three geese and a mongoose. Yes, give us dramatic dissolves as he walks to get his shirt. Battle of the Bone, you know what we want. Classic. This is set on the 12th of July, the Orange community's biggest day of the year, when they're having parties and marches all over the world. So naturally, a local orange hall has been pretty much closed up and there's only three people around to get eaten by zombies who have finally arrived in the city. The zombies then promptly leave the city and go back to the countryside, where they destroy a slightly larger orange meetup that seems to be taking place in a farm with about 12 people attending. Ah yes, the stock pipe band music that really tells me that this film has an important message. Okay, the zombies are killing everyone, but listen to this. You can still hear the fucking pipe bands in the background. Why is it that you can hear a pipe band in the distance while the people who are gathered to listen to it are being slaughtered, but no one can hear anything from room to room in a fucking hospital? Or possibly the members of the pipe band just decided to do the Titanic thing and played on until the zombies had eaten their lungs and stopped them from breathing out. And of course, we end on the bloody chairs that we saw no one get killed near, and a bloody doll because this film has an important message. Back at the hospital, well, I assume it's the hospital, it doesn't look anything like it, and it wouldn't be allowed to be used as a hospital, but it must be the hospital, because I don't know. Anyway, the police are wandering around doing police things, and their uniforms aren't just wrong, but they're inconsistent with each other in their wrongness. And as the pièce de résistance, the last guy has a camera taped to his gun. Very clever way to not draw attention to it, by having it in the middle of the shot like that. Wow, in the last couple of hours since the zombies, this place has been trashed, graffitied, and been turned into a completely different place. So, search, 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 and then a point of view shot from a rifle. Rifle seen green. Who knew? This is a rifle point of view shot taken by that camera. Either that, or this was supposed to be from the camera taped to the rifle, which is actually supposed to be there. Neither of these are good possibilities, so finally they blow up a door for no reason at all. Just get to the zombies! Here I am! What do I do now? Attack! What? Attack! What? Attack! I can't hear you. What? Attack! Oh, maybe I should just attack. Roar! Uniforms couldn't be less accurate if they tried, unless they dressed them in tutus, but they certainly behaved like Northern Irish police. Back with who can laughably be called the stars, they stop outside an electronics shop to watch a news broadcast, and yes, that's an actual Northern Irish newsreader. Anyway, they're outside the shop and so they shouldn't be able to hear the report. And what's more, the TVs inside these shops don't have sound anyway, so they shouldn't be able to hear the report. Not hearing something twice doesn't cancel itself out! And please be warned, these images are very graphic. It's also extremely unlikely. Who the fuck takes this footage while being attacked, escapes, and then sends it to the media within an hour? And that's clearly a zombie point of view shot. What sort of a film has a zombie with a camera attached to their fucking head? Uh, Hellraiser 3, silly question. This is fucking stupid! I wonder what she's saying. For anyone who couldn't understand that, he said, I wonder what she's saying. Meaning they watched the news report because they thought she looked sexy or something. Then stock footage of an actual march with the same music dubbed on. How do I know it's stock footage? Because A, it was actually filmed in the summer, B, they have more than a couple of extras, C, it looks like news report footage, and D, the shops are open in the background. Look, stock footage, movie footage, stock footage, movie footage, it's easy. 
back with the heroes and they come across some zombies. Amazingly, it only took our heroes 56 minutes to come across zombies in a zombie movie. One of the guys thinks that the bloody wounds on the face are because of, I shit you not, disposable razors. And the English woman, because she's a retard, which is obvious because she's come over to Belfast, takes a photo and the sound of the camera disturbs the zombies into attacking. It's not like the sound of the voice of the species that you're hunting will set you off, is it? Oh no, it's a camera sound that sets you off. So they get two cops killed and discuss the situation. I think this has to be the worst day of my life. No, dear. The day you signed up for Battle of the Bone was the worst day of your life. So then there's a bunch more extras that I don't give a shit about being killed off, all with the same fucking pipe band music in the distance. And the trio come across the hoodies again, who seem to have been roving around Belfast in the hope that they would come across them again for revenge. Because that's what anyone would do during a zombie outbreak in a city with about half a million people in it. Foxy, do you guys ever give up? Oh, please tell me that there's another eight minute fight scene. That's pretty much Ruhi Kamara's verses after he took a brick to the head. Oh no. However, will I cope? So yeah, fight, 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 Aidan Gillen runs off, the Englishwoman gets headbutted, Anton LaVey threatens rape, Englishwoman headbutts and steps on his nuts, Englishwoman turns her back on Anton LaVey, Englishwoman throws coat hangers at people, main guy gets garroted with barbed wire, Aidan Gillen attacks a guy armed with a mannequin, and finally the guy being garroted manages to not only not die, but also beat the guy up. Did I miss anything? Oh yes, one of our heroes beats a downed man over the head with a rubber brick that results in CGI blood, and the other hero garrots another downed man with barbed wire. So convinced that their self-defense plea has just gone up to second degree murder, they run off towards the same fucking pipe band music that's still playing! They all meet up and the guy who was garroted has not only managed to stay alive, but can talk perfectly. You know, Mr. Director, you could have used that garroting thing to cut down on some of the dialogue. You know, eased your little audio problem a little bit, maybe? So we see where Birdemic is apparently being filmed, and our heroes decide to head for home. Again. And they come across... <laughs> Was there no one else around you could have been chasing? So, seemingly trapped, two people manage to hold the door and then they manage to buy some time to get to the lift by blocking the door with a very thin piece of carpet. So, no sign of zombies and this was totally filmed before this place opened for the day. Cue zombies. Okay, I lasted this long, I'll use it. plastic bin. Three people shouldn't be able to hold them all back, and a couple could walk through that space! What the hell? I think I made the movie angry. Hold me! Yeah, this. I really don't know why this is going on, but I'm mostly glad. Sure, it looks like a bad music video, but at least they're suddenly doing some sort of a visual style now. Stylistic and crap beats non-stylistic and crap any day. Sure, it suddenly was clearly filmed in a room with white sheets all over the walls and the floor, but it's a damn sight more interesting than the rest of the film. And kudos for that. Nothing much else I can say, really. Except this. Should have filmed the whole film like that. Then they could have claimed it was Art House. So, arty bit over, it's time to once again try to indicate that this film has a serious point. 
stabbing the zombie with the British and Irish flags at the same time. How embarrassing, ridiculous, unnecessary, and pretty much physically impossible. Oh, just shoot the main guy already. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire. That was Battle of the Bone, Northern Ireland's first zombie film, and I have the misfortune to report, not the worst. This film is pretty much terrible, but it was made in a budget of about £10,000 and it was released generally in the UK. I bought my copy in the biggest DVD shop in Northern Ireland. It's quite an achievement for someone with no backing to make a film like this in a place with no record of films like this. Northern Ireland's film output is pretty much dramas about the troubles, comedy with very broad pantomime humour, and stuff set in the countryside. I applaud the people who made this. It's just not very good. Maybe if they team up with some better writers and actors, or stick to choreography, or let someone else direct, or even if they manage to cobble together some more funding, they'll be able to make a solid genre entry one day. And I, for one, hope that they keep at it and one day make something I love. Part of the reason I make these reviews is to expose lesser known films to a bigger audience, and I always hope that at least one person goes out and buys the film I review. And I hope that doubly with Battle of the Bone, because low budget cinema should be supported. Even when it's pretty damn bad. I'm Demon Hagen, and I have to live with that every. It's in you.